Hi, hello and welcome to today's video. It has dawned on me recently that I have not done a wrap up this year and it's kind of like when am I gonna do one? I realise that you guys don't know half of the books that I probably read unless you follow me on Goodreads. So I wanted to make a video today that shows you all of the books that I read in January, February and March, so the first quarter of this year. Just for this year, I think it might be easier for me to do a quarterly wrap up as opposed to a monthly wrap up, purely because when I'm at uni, obviously all my books are kind of here as you can see. Some stats, this year I have read 25 books so far, today is the 31st of March, so bang on a quarter of the way through the year. Okay, so of these 25 books, five of them have been rereads and five of them have been five stars. So, so three of those five stars are rereads, two of them are brand new five stars. So basically every 12 and a half books, I'm finding a five star. I'm gonna do it in order, so the order that I've read them from the 1st of January up until now. The first book that I read this year was the second book in the Emily Wilde series. This is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. I gave this book two stars. I know this is a series that everybody loves. It's a cozy fantasy. And I did enjoy the first one. I think I gave the first one three and a half, four stars. This one, I think Emily was insufferable. Okay, everybody else was really fun. I loved all of the characters except Emily. And when you're reading about a main character that you don't like, the reading experience just doesn't really compute. Emily seemed to have this high horse that she was riding the whole time. and she was really rude towards her niece and nobody is saying this i've seen so many people talk about this book and give it five stars but i don't understand like this is one of these books i actually don't understand how this is a five star if you give it four fine but five stars really i think it was a cute wholesome read but i don't think i'm going to continue with the series I finally picked up Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I've read all of the Grisha verse now, which I'm super happy to say that. And I gave this one three and a half stars. It was much better than King of Scars. I think King of Scars was a really awful book. I did not enjoy that at all. As much as I love Nikolai, I actually don't think he needed this series. Yes, I was glad to be in the same world as all my favorite characters again. However, that being said, I gave it three and a half stars, so I did enjoy it. I can't really remember too much about this. All that I know is Nina's point of view in this, I think was really dull. I was not bothered. I think if we hadn't have had Nina's point of view, this would have been a four, four and a half star territory because I love Nikolai and I love Zoya. And I, I think the ending was really perfect, honestly. I didn't expect it to end that way, but looking back on it, I think it's like, it was kind of the only thing that was going to make the situation better and make the situation work. I enjoyed it, but I'm also like, it didn't need to be this thick. Considering this is like a YA children's-esque book, she was also so thick. But again, I did actually like this and I, I just recommend the Grisha verse as a whole because I think especially when you get into Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, honestly, my life trajectory changed after reading those a few years ago. The next video that I filmed was rereading my five star reads to see if they are still five star books. And the first one that I picked up is a classic. If you've been here since day one on TikTok or on here, A Trial of Sorcerers. This was five stars back in 2021 for me. I wanted to be Era so bad. I think she's a perfect character. She's very much like Aelin vibes but the complete opposite which doesn't make any sense unless you've read both series. On the reread it was not a five stars I gave this four stars. I think the reason for that is the beginning section the pace is just really strange. When I read it for the first time I didn't really notice it because I was so happy and excited about the world but it is a strangely paced book. The insta love between Era and one of the love interests really icked me out. I didn't like it and you're not supposed to either. Other guy though incredible there is this whole scene when they're at a ball and they have the distraction kiss the trope that is in this book it's the distraction kiss but yeah i gave this four stars this is a classic library of days days grace book then we come on to the first five star of the year which was actually a reread my boy alex nelson you on me on vacation i read this again in 2021 absolutely loved it fell in love with it so badly i'm still on the lookout for my personal alex nelson did i meet someone when i went to uni at 19 no does that mean that I can still have this relationship? Probably not, but you know what? We move. I gave this obviously, like I said, five stars. It's one of my favorite Emily Henry rom-coms. In this, we have Alex and Poppy who have been friends for years and years and years. They go on vacation together every single year and we're following them in the past present perspective. So in the past, we're seeing them go on these holidays each year, kind of fall more in love together platonically and maybe romantically. And then we, in the present perspective, the two aren't talking, they're not friends anymore. And you're trying to figure out one, why they're not friends and two, how they're gonna become friends again. I still can't decide if it's my favorite Emily Henry though, which you'll see why later, but 
incredible. For uni, I read a gothic novel called The Castle of Toronto by Horace Walpole. I gave this book three stars. It was super short, really fun to read. It has like the air of the ridiculousness to it, which I think was made it even more fun. And you could really tell that Walpole was just kind of writing and going with it. Class is the origins of the gothic novel, which I think is really cool. We're basically following a prince who whose son tragically dies and there's this supernatural element to it. I then realise that the son's death was a part of this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy that they're then trying to avoid but obviously it's self-fulfilling so it's just a really wild and fun time. I also reread If We Were Villains by M. El Rio, a dark academia Shakespeare inspired book but we have six characters who are actors in this, this kind of conservatoire focusing on Shakespeare plays and every year they get to perform one of the plays. We open with our main character Oliver who is telling a detective the story that what kind of went down years and years ago because Oliver is actually imprisoned for a crime that we're trying to uncover throughout the book. The detective is retiring and it's basically like Oliver can you just actually tell me what happened? Obviously it's kind of off file so it doesn't really matter and plus we're trying to figure out whether Oliver actually is guilty or whether it's somebody else the whole way through. I think it's way better than the secret history. It's more succinct. I like the Shakespeare aspect a little bit more than the ancient Greek aspect even though I've studied both very prolifically. I gave this 4.5 stars upon the reread. Then we come on to my second five star read of the year again another reread Never by Jessa Hastings. Jessa Hastings can do no wrong in my eyes. I still to this day don't understand how people just didn't like this book. I think it is the epitome of Jessa Hastings at like her core. This is a Peter Pan retelling. I think it's set in like the 60s and Daphne goes off into Neverland when Peter finally arrives when she's 17. Her mother, her grandmother and her great grandmother have all been saying for years since about the age of 12 Peter's gonna come however he comes five years late and he's not actually a little boy anymore he's grown up so you're trying to figure out why he's grown up. The writing is just so transformative. The whole time I was reading this book, I felt like I was in Neverland. Like I haven't been transported to somewhere else in my mind for a very long time and done so easily. Five star read, I can't wait for the second one because the ending is classic just for Hastings and is so painful. So I am warning you, the ending is riles you up. Also for uni, I read Oedipus Tyrannus, which is a short play. Obviously, it's the story of Oedipus who doesn't realise that he has fallen in love with his mother and had children with his mother and unknowingly killed his father. So also where the Oedipus complex kind of comes in from Freud. Uh, I gave this three stars, I think. It was fine. I wasn't really too bothered by it, to be completely honest. But it was nice to have some background to where the actual story came from. But yeah, three stars, nothing much to say on it. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I remember watching Lauren Roberts and like, 2020 when she either started this or was just she was writing powerless and i kid you not when it came out completely mine forgot forgot that it was out and then i picked it up and i was like oh my god i'm finally gonna read this i was missing out this book was so so good i gave it four stars like i said if you like red queen i really think you'll like this it's very similar except it's focused quite a bit more on the romance and i think that's why it's like pitched as a romantic as opposed to like a dystopian fantasy we have this society where everybody has some form of power they're called elites. However, our main girl Payden is an ordinary so she has no power and that is really dangerous in this society because the king is trying to kill all of the ordinaries in order to have simply an elite society full of the elites. Um, so Payden passes as an elite because she says that she's psychic and so one day she gets kind of thrown into these games by accident because she saves the prince's life and the prince thinks he's doing her a service by being like hey come into the games with me when realistically she can't compete in, an, in the elite's game because she's ordinary. Ending was just chef's kiss, chaos, chaotic energy. I also downloaded Libby this year which I'm super happy I did because I've been able to pick up some really great audiobooks and I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I'd been wanting to read this for years and so it came on Libby and I thought you know what I'm gonna read that and I'm so glad that I did. In A Good Girl's Guide to Murder we follow Pip who is doing an EPQ at her A-levels and she's focusing on this disappearance of Andy Bell. Andy Bell was a girl who disappeared a few years ago and the case was kind of closed and it's kind of become a cold case and so she decides to pick it back up and as part of her EPQ discover what actually happened however as she continues down this road she kind of realizes that there's way more than meets the eye and a lot of bad things start happening but I really enjoyed this I gave it four stars I think it's a great YA thriller mystery and I'm not really into thrillers and mysteries but this was phenomenal I also read Jane Eyre this year. I, I mentioned this quite a few times. I want to read all of the Bronte sister books this year. We're on a not a roll at the moment because I've only read one. But I really liked that for the first half. 
The second half was quite boring and just didn't go in any direction that I thought it was going to. I did give it three and a half stars because it was like better than boring, but also it wasn't wow, pizzazz, I'm obsessed. I definitely preferred the gothic element of being in Rochester's home. The moment we left there and we met all these other characters, it just kind of felt like Charlotte Bronte didn't really know where she was going with the story and you could tell. And I didn't want to see what happened. You know, I was done. I was like, nah. Never mind. I also read it on Kindle Unlimited, two of the like short novellas. Is it called like an Improbable Meet You? They released six really, really short novellas, like 100 pages and under, for Valentine's Day. And I read the first one, which was The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren. I gave that like a star and a half, two stars. It was terrible. Considering it was only 100 pages, it was not good. But the second one, Worst Wingman Ever by Abby Jimenez. That was a four star read because with Christina Lawrence, they tried to convince you that these two people were in love. What Abby Jimenez did was she convinced you that they were attracted to one another and they were gonna start dating. And that was so much more believable, like in 60 pages as opposed to believing somebody is in love in 100 pages. Another book that I don't physically have with me is Misery by Stephen King. This book started off so good. It was sitting at like a really high four, four and a half stars. I was really enjoying it. I was really nervous too, scared and nervous. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to read another Stephen King book. I really have to like pluck up the courage because this book scared me and this was not a horror. This was a psychological thriller, okay? I gave it in the end three and a half stars because the ending was so disappointing. We have this incredible story of a writer who, who accidentally gets into a car crash and his number one fan finds him by the side of the road, takes him to her house and he basically becomes imprisoned by her. Like she is keeping him there against his will. Oh, his body is not in a stable condition. His legs are broken from the car crash. He writes these books, which are called the misery books and he killed off the main character in the last book. The crazy number one fan is like, you're gonna write me a new misery book kind of realizes that he has to do it very very reluctantly but also what's going to happen once he's finished the book it plays in your brain i had nightmares about this book and i it just was so good but the ending was so oh like the ending i wish it was not the ending then also on libby i read percy jackson and the lightning thief i'd watched the tv show and i also watched the films like back in the day really enjoyed percy jackson but i realized that i never actually read the book and i did and i gave it four stars i thought it was really fun i did start the second one wasn't a fan of that to be completely honest so i don't know whether i'm going to continue the series but i did enjoy the lightning thief audiobook narrator also sounds like an older version of walker scoble and because of that it made it so easy to picture it in my head i definitely think the books are better than the film better than the tv show which is kind of the general consensus that everybody says also for uni i read the arrestia by Aeschylus. it was fine it was three stars. It was fine. I couldn't really tell you what those were about, to be honest, which I think says a lot. We then come on to the first five star of the year. That was a brand new read. Literally made me want to sob. And it did. This is Magnolia Parks Into the Dark by Jessa Hastings. So Jessa Hastings had two five stars from us this year who would have thunk. This is the final book in the Magnolia Parks series, but it's the fifth book in the Magnolia Parks universe. There are still two more books to go. Following socialite Magnolia Parks, as she is kind of recovering from something that happened in the last books. It's very hard to explain what this book is about without spoiling it, so I'm not going to do that. But I will say, seeing my man in this, and if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know that I have two from the same book, okay? But seeing my man, my uh, my art collector, my art dealer, that was pain. I think I'm going to be so honest with you. I'm much more of a Daisy Hates girly. We all know this. Daisy Hates. I want to be her. I want to be her. I want a Christian. And so I was way more invested in the Daisy Hates subplot that we will definitely find out about in the next book. And I think it's going to absolutely kill me. <sighs> Just I had such an appreciation for Magnolia and BJ in this. This book made me actually really love BJ and root for BJ, which I think Jessica Hastings has done so well because if this book came out even slightly different, I think I still would have not liked BJ. It's not a nice book to read. I'm gonna be honest with you. If you think this is like a light fluffy romance, which I feel like a lot of people do, this series is so much more. I'm gonna miss these characters so much. I really try to like slow down with my reading of this because I knew this was the last time I was gonna see them like properly. Five stars for Mac Parks, which is very well deserved. I also read for my gothic module, The Monk by Matthew Lewis. This was a really great book. However, it dragged, so I gave it three and a half stars. Looking back on it, I think it was so fun. I really enjoyed it. Seeing how the author kind of put all of these subplots together. I, I've never seen it done. I can't explain it because I've never seen it done this way before where we would have a subplot, but we would have like 50 pages talking about this subplot and then we would go back to where we were. Whereas normally like a little subplot 
it happens throughout you get little glimpses of it but this time it was like plot subplot plot plot subplot you know it went on like that did give it three three and a half stars though because it was long and it was strenuous and it was a classic and it was a bit boring in parts and i didn't really know what was going on sometimes but hey if you said to me what's your favorite gothic book that you've read so far it would be the monk i will say though if you are thinking of reading the monk the trigger warnings you have to look them up because i went into that semi-blind and by the end i was mm, it was not nice finally of the books that i don't physically have with me i read antigone i read antigone when i was in first year and i really loved that i think antigone is such a great example of an ancient greek play i gave that three and a half stars as well i'm not really too into the ancient greek plays i more prefer the mythology of it i prefer like homer's epics but i still really loved antigone i thought it was great there's nothing really new to say on that because again i've read it before also we read the penelope Air by margaret atwood for my dissertation it's <laughs> I, I'm like pulling my face at this and I'm writing a dissertation on it. Make it make sense. I rate this three stars, but I would probably give it more towards two and a half stars. Um, just because it's, I'm not going to bash it too much because I'm writing my dissertation on it. It's not really what I wanted. And that's that. I thought I had my copy of Hamlet here. I don't. My next five star was another reread that I left at uni and that was Hamlet. I can't really talk to you too much about Hamlet without getting like so passionate about it. But I did give Hamlet five stars. Maybe one day I will do a full video on just my love for that book and everything you need to know about Hamlet. But yeah, I did give it five stars. I read it for my essay that I'm doing it on, which is just so exciting. I'm so excited to write the essay, to be completely honest with you. After I'd read Hamlet, I was in a really big reading slump. Like nothing was just hitting. I read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, DNF'd that. So I decided I needed a fun, light-hearted book. And I went with Bride by Ellie Hazelwood. This is a paranormal romance where our main girl Misery, who is a vampire, marries Lo, who is a werewolf, kind of in a marriage of convenience type of trope too, to make the alliance of the two species better. Four and a half stars for this book. Ali Hazelwood really hit it out of the park with this one. I just can't get over how much I really enjoyed this. Like I didn't, I just didn't expect to love this book half as much as I did. It's my favourite Ali Hazelwood. I need Ali Hazelwood to do more paranormal romances, please. I need more vampires. I need more werewolves. The Twilight Girl in me is literally dying over this. I binged it in a couple days, type of good. And I hadn't done that with a book since maybe, since like never by Jessa Hastings, like that far ago, that long ago. This really got me out of a reading slump and I enjoyed every single second I was in this world. We then come, come on to my most recent five star. I was very kindly gifted a copy of Funny Story by Emily Henry and I gave it five stars. Daphne is me. Miles and Daphne as characters are just perfect together. That's the best way to describe it. The book was so easy to fly through. I read this in like two proper sittings. My heart was racing at points. My heart was dropping. I just felt every emotion you possibly can towards the book within this. It's much closer to a happy place type of book as opposed to like a beach read type of book if we're kind of comparing them for the ease of the review. This is like happy place meets book lovers and I was not a book lovers girly but this was so good, so good. The penultimate book that I read recently was An Education in Malice. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to dwell on this for too long because there's a whole video coming on it. I gave this two and a half stars. It was not good. I think a lot of people really love this book because it's like dark academia. But the dark academia element was so subdued. You didn't really notice it. The characters in this, none of them were nice. I didn't like any of the characters. All of the characters just felt very two dimensional. And the author kind of kept trying to put in the fact that they were three dimensional. They were really complex characters and they just weren't. And then finally, I started the Chestnut Springs series and I read Flawless. I gave this three stars. However, I think it's because I wasn't a huge fan of the couple in this. I really enjoyed the book. Like I thought it was so fun. It was really exciting. I'd never read a cowboy romance before, so I was super excited about it. But I do feel like, and this is also like me with my forefront brain, I do think there's going to be another couple that I like more in this. I don't know who yet. I have heard that the series gets better as it goes on, so I'm really excited to read this book. Just because I gave this three stars doesn't mean I like didn't enjoy it. I really, really loved this book. It's more like a three and a half stars, like if we're getting into the nitty gritty. I think at some points I felt a little bit insta lovey, so maybe that's why like I much prefer I prefer a slower burn but I do feel like with a lot of romance books they are kind of insta lovey so if you go into it with that mindset it makes them more palatable so those are all 25 of the books that I've read so far this year I hope by the next time I see you again I've read another 25 so we can hit that reading goal for the end of the year thank you so much for watching let me know what your favorite books of the year so far have been and I will see you guys in my next video bye